saw your tweet too that you were saying for all those people that are saying I just destroyed my career. I'm just getting started and I started laughing. And I think it's the same. I think it's happening in a lot of industries, but specifically ones that kind of live on the outskirts of what's deemed acceptable. So I would say comedy and sex work are are on the fringes. I think when you see so many opportunities to be self-sufficient and have your own platform and not be beholden to these companies that have kind of ruled the universe since existence, there's going to be a shift and there's so much more power there. And I think so many people are trained to still kind of cower underneath what's acceptable and not realizing the door's wide open. And then you can just run through and still be wildly successful. You don't need to have a deal with a food network. I don't have to have a contract with an adult company, right? You can create your own success and then you kind of get to forge your own path. And then it's you get to voice your opinions and I get to voice my opinions and I don't have to worry if I say um, that my opinion on X is this, it goes in this one bucket, all of a sudden I'm on this no shoot list, right? That's a mm-hmm. terrible place to constantly be living. There's always anxiety if you're going to get hired or if your colleagues want to work with you or who's going to go on on the road with you, yada, yada. Um, I think that that it might be a little bit bumpier in the beginning, but there's so much more to be had at the end of that road if you decide to like move forward with it. Um, so I don't, I don't see someone like you being able to be canceled. I think it's so funny that everyone's losing their mind because it's like, okay, you had this show on Food Network, great, but there's a lot more opportunity. There's a lot more places that you can grow and be successful. Well, and the thing that's so funny to me is like the show on Food Network aided in my shift to have more conservative perspective because like we traveled the country. I met all these amazing people and entrepreneurs and chefs Mm -hmm. and restaurant industry people who all for the most part had very conservative political leanings. Oh, yeah. And and I look at the lives that these people created for themselves and again, their radical individualism, their bravery, their independence, their fucking tenacity to chase their dreams and to to make something of themselves. It's inspiring. Like I would go to these restaurants and meet these people and be fucking like I would walk away and feel like a piece of shit. (laughs) I would be like. I would be like, listen, I might have a show on television, but that guy's a fucking rock star like that dude or that woman, um, you know, and, and by the way, so many awesome women entrepreneurs that we met in the in the the, the run of the show um, Two that really stick out to me were the two women that own Truffles and Bacon Cafe in uh, Henderson, Nevada, outside of Vegas. It's just fucking tremendous entrepreneurs who love what they do. Like, that's really what it is, is I think doing. I met a lot of comedians in my time, very famous ones too, that you can tell really don't love what they do. And we see this in the NFL all the time. You'll see guys that are first round draft picks that are out of the league a year later. And if you, the team does press and they go, yeah, man, he just didn't really love football. And so he didn't make it as an NFL player. There are a lot of comedians that are, uh, that are um, successful that don't love comedy and that don't love people and, and experiences and and life and telling stories. Um, There was very few people I met traveling, doing ginormous food that didn't love, love what they do. I mean, I would walk into these kitchens and they'd be like, they would have like a Thanksgiving. They go, this is everything I do. Taste it all. (laughs) Experience it all. And yeah, obviously we all got enormously fat doing the show, but just these 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 rock star people who were in love with their occupation. And so, you know, by nature of like being around those people and listening to their stories and what my biggest regret about ginormous food is that we didn't tell their stories enough. It was like food porn, for lack of a better word, was the show. And one of the points of contention in the show leading up to them not picking up my contract was I did. I wanted more um, creative control over the show. I wanted more money, which comes along with that. But I wanted the creative control to say um, some of these people have tremendous stories. And I think sometimes we need to break format to tell their story. Like I, this segment shouldn't be about the 20 pound burger they made because we asked them to it should be about this, this person surviving cancer and his, and before crowdsourcing his entire community donating money to keep his restaurant afloat while he was wow. getting chemotherapy and couldn't run his restaurant. Like that's a fucking story. Mm-hmm. That's something I would want to watch. And, and also I'm a talented enough guy to, to, to interview someone and, and get that story out of them 
and then go into the kitchen and make a fucking ass out of myself as well. Like give me the freedom to do that and, and give us the creative license to know this is a moving story and this is what needs to be told. Mm -hmm. And they did, they were so format focused. They were like, Nope, your show is about being a silly fat titted bitch. And (laughs) you are, we're not going to entrust you to tell these people stories. We're not going to let you and and we're not going to let them tell them. And you know, that was a very creative, um, you know, that was a very big creative difference that we had um, going into the, again, one of the many factors in them not choosing to renew my contract was I really wanted to make a different show. And I shared a post, people can go back on Facebook. When they moved the show from Food Network to Travel, my producer at my production company told me like, we might be able to start doing more of that. So I was excited because I, so I went on social media and said, I know this this looks like a demotion going from Food Network to Travel Channel, but I feel like we might actually start to make the show I really want to make. And the fucking network lost their mind that I shared. Yeah, that. you're not allowed to. They do were that. like, "How dare you? How dare you say that you you want the show to be different?" And I go, "I'm being honest. Like, I'm be I've shared these thoughts with you guys. I'm sharing them with my fans, and um, you know, and and some of my really close fans and friends would watch the show, and they're like, "Yeah, it's cool to see you on TV, but like." you're so much more than that character that they have you playing. Like you're not some goofy barbecue dad. You're like a really smart, introspective, clever guy. And there's, there's more you could be doing with that show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talked to many other people in food and the food network world, like Duff Goldman and, uh, and Duff told me, he goes, uh, Bobby Flay said the same thing. He goes, everybody gets into this business wanting to be the next Anthony Bourdain. And the reality is, is we're all very lucky if we can just be the next Guy Fieri. <laughs> and I said, I said, man, that sucks to hear. Like, that's just a dream crusher, right? Um, Why do you because think you're that just is? Like, like, obviously. Comfort. It's the cage. Okay. It's the cage. It's they just go, well, I'd rather I'd rather have a show than not have a show at all. So I'll take the shitty pay and I'll do it however they demand I do it. And I'll wear the clothes they give me and I'll let them change my hair and I'll, I'll be a person that I'm not. And it turns into acting. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, and listen, those kinds of things happen in every industry and in every profession, like, you know, at at everybody's job, they're always trading a little bit of freedom for more comfort and and more ease and, and more likability. And I, one of the reasons why I am this way as a person is that I've never been liked. Even when I do all of the right things, the quote unquote right things, I'm a guy who always, there's always a chunk of people that will just never fucking like me because maybe it's my red hair. (laughs) Maybe it's my face. Maybe it's the way I talk. And so I grew up my entire life going, there's no amount of bending to other people's will that will make me beloved by everyone. So if I'm going to go through my entire life being hated by a good chunk of people, no matter what I do, I might as well be myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very wise. A lot of people would still try to make everybody happy. 